Examples of authorities, your mechanic. Mm -hmm. But he tells you you need a new catalytic converter, you might get a second opinion, but you don't, unless you know cars, you don't go in there and check, right? My dad visited Africa and he said, man, African sunsets are beautiful, they're just gorgeous. I believed it. <clears throat> I've never seen one, you know, all the photoshopped uh, pictures on Google images, I don't trust those. You know, so it's like, okay, when someone tells you what something looks like, Almost all of our scientific beliefs are held on authority. Why? Because I don't have the time, and you probably don't have the money, to redo all these experiments. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I don't believe you about those amino acids. I'm going to set up a lab and check. Okay. So when someone publishes a paper, then you, you take it on their uh, authority, and we build, kind of, we build from there. Um, news is all told usually, you know, sometimes it's by testimony, non-expert, but sometimes it's uh, someone saying, you know, I was there, or I know about this area, and this is what happened. If your doctor tells you, take this little pill, you'll feel better. I don't ask questions. Um, and all history comes from either a historian, who's an authority on the subject, or a primary source, someone who wrote a document about that time, and historians kind of collect it all together. So we don't necessarily think that these people have authorities or experts, but it's the kind of thing we, we implicitly trust. Okay, so what's the difference? Oh, in legal matters too, you know, the law is so complex, you trust your lawyer or whatever if you have a lawyer. And you probably shouldn't trust your lawyer if you do. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so the point being here, we have authorities that we may not trust, authorities that we may trust, what's the difference? When is it a, a fallacy to say, oh, you're appealing to that authority, I don't believe you because this David Flynn guy is nuts. Well, here's an example of a bad appeal to authority. Kevin Costner says that the glaciers are melting, therefore global warming is true. This is the nice 80s, like dystopia, water world. <laughs> and that is a quote from Keith Buehler, amateur screenwriter and philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> Notice that this guy's apparent expertise has nothing to do with climate change, okay? And nor does Kevin Costner, so there's two, actually, two appeals to authority going on here. This guy, Tim Barnett, who's a researcher at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, if I'm saying that right, says new computer models that look at ocean temperatures instead of the atmosphere show the clear signal yet that global warming is going your way. So he's not giving me the argument, he's not giving me all the detail, but he's just telling me this is true, and look, he's an expert in the field, so his opinion matters. So they're both arguing for the same conclusion, but one's a fallacy. Does that make sense? It's arguing for it in the wrong way, and the other would be more of a stronger argument. So what's the difference between uh, valid appeal to authority and invalid? It depends on the authority as a relevant expert has to be a relevant expert. Sometimes, you know, there'll be a national tragedy and some, like, physicist will get on TV and, like, pontificate about why it happened. And it's just because he's a scientist, you know? And you're like, what do you know about the psychology of crime or whatever? But they're like, everyone thinks, oh, they're an authority, so let's see what they have to say. But they have to be a relevant authority to the topic at hand. And sometimes, even when they're a relevant authority, like David Flynn, he's a, you know, he's an astronomer, studies the occult. Um, you might say, you know what, he's a bad authority on that topic. And that's, that. so if someone says, if you say, if you say, yeah, that's an appeal to an authority, that's a fallacy, and then the person says, but look, they're a relevant authority on the topic, you, what you have to do is try to undermine the person's authority. If you can't do that, you have to admit that, that counts as evidence against your position. So Gary Cuddy uh, has this, uh, quote on global warming, he says, the essential point is that once we accept the authority of a particular scientific discipline, we cannot consistently reject its conclusions. In other words, this Tim Burnett guy, if I think he's a pretty good scientist, I think oceanography is a real science, and he tells me that, that's evidence for his conclusion. That's a good appeal to authority. If I say, you know what, oceanography is bunk, that's just a bunch of crap that people are making up off the top of their heads, then that's the only way I can get around it. So something to think about um, for you know, our, the rest of our semester when we look at different fallacies is, if you trust somebody, why do you trust them? Is it because they're a relevant authority? How do you figure out that they're a relevant authority? Um, and if there is someone that you don't trust, 
do you have a different authority that you're kind of pitting against them? So I might say, you know, David Flynn's like an astronomer, but I know this other astronomer that I trust more that thinks he's nuts. See what I mean? So you're kind of, you're still appealing to authority, but you're doing it in a valid way. So now we have time for questions, but we're, we're done. One question. Well, in, in an example like this, where, I mean, how can you, whatever you be stating, there are no, you can't back it up in any way without any kind of evidence. So, I mean, how can you debunk his expertise? If, I mean, well, there's a he could be an expert in his field, but he's still talking about something that he doesn't know. Right, right. And, and sometimes the, just the topic, you know, you have to show that anybody who talks about this topic, like an expert on unicorns, like, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know? Um, so you have to, have to show that the topic doesn't exist. The fact is, with regard to like Sidonian stuff, I was just researching this last night, um, there, it is really called Sidonia, that's like a NASA name, and there's a whole group of like conspiracy theorists who are like researching this, trying to figure out what's going on. But what you have to say is this whole body of people are kind of off base, and you have to try to prove that to dissuade his authority. And you can have to cite other authorities like NASA people who are like, it's just a mound of dirt. But, but isn't it true that those people could be well educated, could have studied, it could be real smart, but they just want to believe this? Sure, <laughs> it could be, yeah. And that's why this gets really complicated and I think a lot of fun. So. And you can't make scientific claims on the basis of theology. 